Greetings everyone. Welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to talk about audio amplifier gain. How to measure and how to calculate. Why would you be concerned with amplifier gain? Well, if you're building an amplifier or you get one of the kits in, you need to know that you have enough input signal in order for it to have enough output signal into the load to get you know, the power it's rated when you really need it. For example, let's say you're building a 100 watt amplifier and it's 100 watts into 8 ohm loads. Well, one thing I should mention at this point, when we're talking about gain in electronics, we're usually talking about voltage gain. So that would apply here as well because you have to have enough voltage into an impedance to you know, get that power rating. So with an amplifier that can deliver 100 watts into an 8 ohm load, we need to know what the output voltage would be. So using that as an example, you could run the calculation. So you take 100 watts times your 8 ohm load impedance and uh, take the square root of that result and it's about 28.3 volts RMS you need to develop into that load. And from there you can work back to what your gain needs to be depending on your input signal. Audio power amplifiers will run within a certain range of gain. They, you know, they don't go overboard with the gain because you have an issue with uh, noise and distortion. It's hard to design a power amplifier with a lot of gain that's low noise and low distortion. So what they do is keep the gain within a certain region. It's usually around 30 times give or take. It's not set in stone. But if you need a lot more gain than that, it's better to design the power amp circuit with around that much gain and then get your extra gain from a preamplifier stage. Okay, so moving on, I have a little demonstration set up. This will be the little LM1875 board. And the nice thing about this, you don't have to have an oscilloscope, though you can certainly use one. You don't really need one as long as you have a meter that can measure AC is fine. You know this meter is pretty inexpensive and it can measure from 10 Hertz to over 1000 Hertz pretty accurately so we'll use that in this test. So in the case of this chip amp it has an external feedback network so you can set the gain and it has a um, 22 ohm, I'm sorry, a 22 kilo ohm resistor and a 1k resistor in the feedback divider network. So here is a simple amplifier design and it's showing the negative feedback. And this video I'm not going to talk about how negative feedback works, but it does set the gain for the amplifier. And the basic equation for a non-inverting amplifier is this resistor divided by this resistor plus one gives us the gain. So in the case of this amplifier here, this is 22K and this is 1K, so it gives us a ratio of 22 plus one. So the gain of this amplifier is 23 times. Now I'm not really going to use decibels in this video, but you will often hear gain represented in decibels, so it's important to understand how to calculate that. So if you take the ratio of your output signal to your input signal, in other words the gain which is 23, take the log of that and multiply it by 20. In other words it's 20 log the out over in uh, signal voltage level. That will give you your gain in decibels. And to convert from the decibels back into that ratio. Uh, you just divide off 20 and use the inverse log button on your calculator and it'll undo that decibel figure for you. So this is how you set up your amplifier to test without using an oscilloscope. So what you're going to do is connect a load resistor across the output. Then also this attenuation resistor which will be connected in series with a speaker. What this does is reduce the 
signal level in the speaker because you don't want a real loud continuous tone playing in your speaker which you know it's very loud and annoying and harmful to your hearing and at higher levels you know near clipping it can damage the speaker so you attenuate that with the resistor and that could be for example a 100 ohm power resistor here that reduces the level in the speaker now when we measure the voltage we're measuring right across the output of the amplifier not across the speaker in this case because it's been attenuated now to hear the clipping point you need to use a lower frequency I found it's easier to hear the clipping point if you use say a 100 or 200 Hertz signal at a thousand Hertz it's still kind of loud and annoying and it's harder to hear the actual clipping point because those harmonics at the higher frequencies at least to my ears are harder to hear you can clearly at 100 Hertz you can clearly hear that grittiness to the sound when it starts clipping okay you have the music player set up going into the little bench amp preamp actually and that goes into the power amp this is just a junction it does not um, have any circuitry on it really this other stuff here is from another video so it's not actually part of the circuit and I'm using a 4 ohm load on the output and then that goes through the attenuator resistor into the speaker down here so let me turn on the signal So now I have a pure 100 hertz tone playing. And now listen to the clipping point. Hear how it gets kind of raspy sounding? Yeah, that's the clipping. There's a lot of odd harmonics in there, sound pretty awful. Well, you want to make sure you dial that back. It doesn't have to be right at the point of clipping because, you know, the amplifier is linear. So how, however we take the voltage, you know, when we do the calculation, it should be the same. So I pulled it back a ways from clipping, and I'll now take a voltage reading here. Okay, so I'm going to get the meter into the shot here. i got to get it set for AC. And hopefully my hands don't block the shot. I'll measure right at the output terminals. 3.646. You hear it reset. I have the audio player on loop and it resets every so often. 3.646, right? So I'll go ahead and punch that in. 3.6 six four six and now I'll measure the input signal level and I'll measure it right here okay I had to put this resistor in to act as a connection point using its leg it's not really in the circuit the other ends left open 160.1 millivolts so that'll be 0 0.1601. And we come up with a value of 22.77, which is close. It's not super accurate. It could be a lot of things, measurement error, sister value error, and even slight differences in the chip. The gain calculation can actually be more complex but we won't get into that here but you can see that it is pretty accurate you know for our purposes it's close enough so now I want to see what signal level do I need on an input to drive the amplifier to its maximum point just before clipping in other words when I'm feeding this thing a signal I want to make sure I'm getting its full potential by having enough input signal to be able to drive it to clipping and that will vary, of course, depending on output power. 
you know, in the example before, we needed 28.3 volts with a 100 watt amplifier that was driving an 8 ohm load. So now with this amplifier, I'm running it on a plus and a minus 10 volt supply. So what I need to do is adjust the signal so it's just before clipping. And then you can hear it clipping. And I'll bring that back at the point where it's not clipping anymore. And now I can get an output voltage reading. 5.165 on the output. You know, you don't have to take that measurement, but I just wanted to see what the output was. And now I'll measure the signal that's given me that. And you can calculate it as well because, you know, we figured what our gain was. 226.9 millivolts. So when I use the calculator, I come up with 227.6 millivolts. So you can see how you can calculate that just by taking the output voltage, dividing it by the gain of the amplifier, and that tells you what the input voltage should be. And let's turn off that annoying hum, by the way. I should have done that earlier. Now I should mention, you know, I was just running the amplifier around 3.3 watts with that, you know, fairly low supply voltage. If I used a higher supply voltage and got, you know, say 25 watts, which the amplifier is certainly capable of, I would have to, of course, remeasure that and recalculate what the minimum uh, input voltage would be to drive it to you know the point just before clipping. Now let's take a look at another situation. Let's say you have a really high power amplifier for PA use. You know it could produce a thousand watts into a four ohm load. And let's see what kind of input voltage we would need with a gain of say 30 to be able to drive it to that capability. So you take 1000 times Four, which is 4,000 and take the square root of that so we'd need 63 volts RMS on the output you know into a 4 ohm load to get a thousand watts so we have to divide that by our gain of 30 so we would need 2.1 volts RMS on the input of that amplifier in order to drive that to such a capability so if you plugged a music player such as this, which only puts out 500 millivolts, it would not be able to drive that powerful amplifier to its full capability. It would only be able to drive it to 56 and a quarter watts. So it, you know, it shows you that you really need to have the proper input voltage to produce that high of output voltage. So in that case, I would need to use this preamp which has enough capability, by the way, to drive that kind of voltage into an amplifier. Well, that about wraps it up for this. Hopefully it makes sense as to why you need to look at your input voltage levels in order to be able to drive the power amp to its full capabilities. Thanks for watching.